Hello, welcome back to Solving Equations with Two Variables. Um, what we want to do is just get a little flavor for one way that we might be able to solve these. In reality, the way that we're going to do this here is really not what you're going to do through most of the class, but it is interesting and it does help you learn something. So let's take these equations that I'm about to write down and let's solve them. Solve the equation if and this is the very, very important part. If x and y are whole numbers. And I should probably remind you that whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, dot, dot. So whole numbers are not fractions, and whole numbers are not negative. They're just literally 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. So we want to solve the following equation assuming that x and y are whole numbers. So 2x plus y equals 6. Now how do you solve an equation like this? This is where we're, where we're going. Well, the critical piece of information that you're given is that x and y are whole numbers. So you know x can be any of these numbers. So all we need to do is stick these numbers in for x and start calculating what y is. Uh, and then we'll see what we get. Now, the easy way to do that is we want to solve this equation for y. We want to get y by himself, and you'll see why in just a second. So if we solve for y, what we do is we subtract 2x from both sides. So y is equal to 6 minus 2x. We just subtract 2x from both sides. Now you see we can stick any one of these values for x in here and calculate what the corresponding value of y will be to make the equation work. So the easiest way to actually do this is with a table. We provide values of x. Okay, and then we're going to calculate values of y, but we know that y is 6 minus 2x because we manipulated the equation, and then once we get that, we'll write down the solution. And we are going to get a whole bunch of ordered pairs back. So let's just go ahead and take some values of x, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We can go past 4 if we need to, but these are the whole numbers that I've written down so far. Now what happens if x is equal to 0? That means we stick x is equal to 0 in here, and that means that y is equal to 6 minus 2 times 0. So this is just 2 times 0, which is 0. So 6 minus that is just going to be 6. So what this means is that when x is equal to 0, the only thing y can be is 6 in order to make this equation true. So that means that the solution for this set here, or one of the solutions, is going to be 0 comma 6. x is equal to 0, y is equal to 6. Now verify it for you. Stick 0 in here, 2 times 0 is 0. y is equal to 6, so you have 6 is equal to 6. So that is a solution because the way that we calculated this is we just solved the equation for what y is. We stuck the value of x in and we calculated the only value of y that, that works with that particular value of x that we're, we're given. Now let's go and do the same process for x is equal to 1. We just stick it in there. If x is equal to 1, then y must be 6 minus 2 times x, which means 2 times 1. So that means 6 minus 2, because 2 times 1 is 2. 6 minus 2 is 4. So that means that when y is equal to 1, uh, I'm sorry, when x is equal to 1, uh, y must be equal to 4. So the ordered pair is 1 comma 4. Now notice that we're saying that solve the equation if x and y are both whole numbers. Now in this case, x and y are whole numbers, x and y are whole numbers, so we're good. Let's continue down when x is equal to 2. Then y would be 6 minus 2 times 2, right? Now 2 times 2 is 4, 6 minus 4 is equal to 2. So when x is equal to 2, uh, let me go back and change that. When x is equal to 2, y must also be equal to 2, and these are both whole numbers, so we're good. Now let's continue down the line. What happens when x is equal to 3? Then y must be equal to 6 minus 2 times 3. 6 minus 6, which is 0. 0 is also still a whole number, so the solution in this case is x is equal to 3, y is equal to 0. Those are both whole numbers, so we're good. Now what happens when x is equal to 4? y must then be equal to 6 minus 2 times 4. This is 8, so this is 6 minus 8 which is negative 2. Now notice, we're solving the equation if x and y are constrained to only be whole numbers. Negative 2 is not a whole number. So when you stick x is equal to 4 in, the value that you get for y is not a whole number. So because we're saying, just, as a, just as for the purpose of exercises, that this problem 
we're only going to look at solutions that contain whole numbers, then we're going to say this is not a whole number. So we're saying it's not part of the solution. And we're just doing that to illustrate the problem here. All right, so what we found is that when x is 0, y must be 6. And when x is 1, y must be 4, and so on down the line. We have these ordered pairs, but anytime we get to 4, we get a negative answer. If we pick 5 here, it would be 6 minus 10, which would be a negative answer. Anything past here, you're always going to get a negative answer. So there are no more solutions to this equation that are whole numbers, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So the solutions are as follows. 0, 6, 1, 4, 2, 2 and 3 comma 0. There are no more solutions that are whole numbers. In this case we're saying that the we want to see only the answers that are whole numbers. So that's this would be the answer here uh, there. All right now we're going to do the same exact thing with a one more problem just to give you some practice. We only want to find solutions that are whole numbers and the equation for this next problem is 3x plus 2y equals 8. So the same thing we want to construct a table and we're going to solve for y. So first let's move the 3x over. So 2y is equal to 8 minus 3x. And then we want to divide by 2. Divide by 2, so the 2's cancel. So then what we have is y is equal to 8 minus 3x over 2. I know that that's ugly. There's really not a great way to simplify it. But it gets the job done. So let's go down to our table. Let's construct the table of x values. When we provide the whole numbers for x, then we're going to say that y is equal to 8 minus 3x over 2. And then we're going to write down the solution. All right, so remember, we're saying that x and y are whole numbers. So let's just do the same thing. 0, 1, 2, 3. We could go 4, 5, 6, and so on. But let's just stop it there. What happens when x is equal to 0? Then y is 8 minus 3 times 0 over 2. So since this is 0, it becomes 8 over 2, which means this is 4. So when x is 0, y is 4. So 0 comma 4 is a solution. And this is a, these are whole numbers, so we say that it's part of our solution set. Now what happens when x is equal to 1? We say that y is equal to 8 minus 3 times 1 over 2, because we're sticking it in the value for x. So we have 8 minus 3 is 5. So we're going to end up with 5 halves. Is this a whole number? 5 halves is a fraction. It's not a whole number. So we just put no. Not whole. So we did find the value of y that works with this value of x, but since our, our problem we only want solutions that are whole numbers, we're going to reject it. Now we look at what happens when x is equal to 2. Then y would be equal to 8 minus 3 times 2 over 2. 2 times 3 is 6, so 8 minus 6 is 2, 2 over 2 is 1. So that's a whole number, so we say that 2 comma 1 is a part of our solution. Now let's move on to the last one we have written here. What if we have this, and we say that y then would be equal to 8 minus 3 times x is equal to 3 over 2. So 3 times 3 is 9, right? 8 minus 9 is negative 1, so what we're going to have here is negative 1 half. And this obviously is not going to work because it not only is it not a whole number, it's, it's negative, so I'm going to write it down as not whole. So let's kind of do a mental experiment. What's going to happen if we pick bigger and bigger numbers? Because x can only be whole numbers, so 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. We're going to have 8 minus, in this case it was 8 minus 9. If we put 4 in here, it would be 3 times 4 is 12, so it would be 8 minus 12. Any number we pick larger is going to give us 8 minus a bigger, bigger number. We're always going to get a negative number here. Always. So we'll always have a negative answer, and negative numbers are not whole numbers. So there's no reason to continue the table, because as we continue to do that, we'll always get a negative answer. So the answer to this question is, which solutions are only whole numbers? We say that uh, 0, 4 and 2, 1 are the solutions the whole number solutions, because that's what this problem said. So we're done with this lesson. Um, this type of solution technique where we're just making a table, it's not something you're going to do too much in algebra, but we do it here because we, we want to show you the concept of solving the equation for y, 
plugging in values of x and getting values of y. That's mostly what we're doing here. In reality, we have different techniques that we're going to use to solve equations, so we're not going to be making tables. But I do want you to understand that you're very likely to be tested on it or to be you know, given homework on this kind of topic. Um, but for now, just make sure you understand this, and then follow me on to the next section, and we're going to talk a whole lot more about this ordered pair concept, where you have x comma y surrounded by parentheses. So if you've never seen that before, we're going to go dive into that a whole lot more uh, in, in a whole lot more detail in the very next section.